Jaron Ennis beats whatever's left of Sergei Lipinets. If you like the kind of work that I do here on this demonetized channel, do consider supporting me it on Patreon. Cash app, links in the description, pinned comment. Anyway, how's everybody doing? Man, I'm so sick and tired of all the hype. Oh, Jaron Ennis, Terrence Crawford. Uh, shut the fuck up, man. Make the fight. Let me know when it's signed, okay? Top rank, PBC. Need I say more? Fucking hell, man. So annoying. <laughs> Boxing has become uh, this thing that a lot of people do. And what it is, is talk about fantasy fucking fights. Hit me up when the shit is signed, sealed, about to be delivered. Then we'll have something to talk about. Other than that, fucking hell. Anyway, good performance, I thought, for Jaron Ennis. Uh, that being said, uh, Lipinets quit. Yeah, he did beat the fight out of him, but I mean, how difficult is it to beat the fight out of a guy that's much smaller than you, all beat up already, and apparently, I don't know how true this is, but apparently didn't have a full camp. And I mean, looked a little bit husky in there. Slow, sluggish. Uh, was a shell of, not that Lipinets was ever that good, but still, that Lipinets we saw was a shell of the guy that arguably beat Mikey Garcia, right? But whatever, man. On to Jaron Ennis. Um, <clears throat> if there was anything that impressed me, uh-oh, uh-oh, I mean, <laughs> oh, I just noticed that, man, uh, you know, I mean, what are you going to do? <laughs> uh, maybe it's just baby fat. You know, maybe it's not roids. Maybe it's baby fat. Hey, look, man. Oh, shit. He's on that Spence juice. Oh, no. Don't let... Don't let Thunderdome get a hold of this, man. Fight Scout, where you at? <laughs> I just noticed this. Oh, man. It is what it is. Um... If there was anything that impressed me about... And this in this fight is this like almost uncanny ability to just roll shots or like relax when when he's getting hit to a point where his head spins around all crazy and he doesn't get hurt. That being said, the fact that he's getting hit cleanly and often is because the defense is leaky. So, you know, he is... A guy would, well, first and foremost, he's got, he's a huge welter, right? So he's got size. Uh, speed looks decent. You know, it's hard to talk about power because it's like, well, who did he fight? And we'll see what that is when he fights uh, in his natural weight division, right? At least 154. So we'll see what's up with that. But so far, so good, I guess. You know, Lipinets did quit. He was getting hurt, you could tell, to the body and even lower than that a lot. And that one, I think it was the right hand that hurt him. I, it, you know, it made him do the a bit of a dance and then that left uppercut. It didn't really land all that cleanly. Um, he, he just wanted out of there. He wanted out of there. Lipinets, as I mentioned, was, you know, for a boxer that's making weight, he was a little bit husky, man. Probably struggled to make weight. Um, had somewhat of a fat camp, probably. I don't know, I'm speculating. He looked like shit in this fight, let's be honest. But, and this did his thing, all things considered, you know. Again, his ability to roll punches his his reflexes to react reacting to these punches 
that was pretty impressive to me. But again, the only reason why we're even impressed by that is because, well, the defense is leaky. So you could feign them, right? You could show them the left hand, maybe. Have them roll a little bit, come back, and then commit to the punch or the right hand, whatever, and have them literally turn into it. Perhaps, right? You got to set them up. Speaking of setups, um, there was a little bit of that in Ennis's game. I've never seen them fight. I've I seen some highlights, but, you know, Pauli Malinaji has some amazing highlights too, I guess. If you just cherry pick uh, the best moments. The best highlight reel, though, to this day, best knockout reel of all time, Amir Khan. Just, just throwing that out there. Um, you know, he, he hooks off the jab a little bit. There's a little bit of feigning, um, but the jab for the most part is pretty predictable. It's not that good. Uh, he wasn't able to maintain distance very well. And what I thought was a little bit troubling, and I know that's partly his demeanor, uh, but it's, I think it's also lack of skill i'm not saying he's not skillful but he doesn't have like top top level skill technically but what was troubling is that this little guy with pretty flat feet sluggish um not not that strong never really was with wide looping shots doesn't really throw straight punches it's very predictable himself this little guy was able to push him back you know yeah and it's walked them into punches and, and stopped them eventually. But again, you know, that's a shell of Lipinet, right? So, in other words, if you got a guy like Lipinet able to push you back like that, um, you know, what is Sean Porter going to do? For example, right? That'd be an interesting fight. Sean Porter's tied up. He, he's got much better options. But, you know, maybe eventually that fight could happen. That's something more realistic that we can talk about rather than someone like Crawford anyway you know again good hand speed um, nice punch technique for the most part turns his punches over well sits on his punches he is hittable he will exchange he throws combinations so he's pretty fun to watch um, you know we'll see we'll see when he gets in there with the real one if he will remain fun to watch you know Crawford was fun to watch when he was, I guess, beating up on bums and getting pieced up by Gamboa. But then he gets in the ring with the real one. And the fun just kind of, the air just kind of left the tires, right? Fun just evaporated. So, you know, and it's got talent. Uh, he's got size. He, uh, you know, commits to his punches, turns them over. He comes to knock these lower level guys out hopefully you know that continues keith thurman's another example right of a guy that runs into a little bit of resistance and you know the aura the 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 balls you know we really find out what they're made of so it is what it is i'm not saying that's who Ger geron 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 ennis is Shouldn't there be like a little accent over the O or something like that? If you're going to use, what, what are these, French names or something? Geron? I don't know. Anyway, let me take a sip of my coffee. You know, he's got pretty good feet. Fast feet. He's pretty mobile. He, he's got some angles. Uh, he's got some lateral movement. The guy's got talent, no doubt about it. Um... He's just not what I would call a technician. He's more of a Roy Jones type. And, you know, those guys, it's all fine and good so long as they keep cherry picking, right? But once they get in the ring with the technician, you know, they tend to get knocked out or beat up. Roy Jones is a perfect example of that, as was uh, Nassim Hamed. So... We'll see, man, but there's, you know, there's talent there, but it's like you keep putting this guy in a ring with these dudes that don't get 
they're they're not there to win. They're compromised in some way, shape, or form. Beat up. You know what is he learning from these fights? Really, honestly, what is he learning? And I feel like Lipinets is the way he throws his punches and the how predictable he is. That really um, made things easy for for Ennis. So we'll see, man. Hopefully he stops wearing skirts. You know, eh, I'm not into that. A man wearing a skirt that says, what, what did it say? Body, catch a body or something like that? Come on, man. Come on, man. A skirt wearing gangsta. Like, uh, that's, that's, come on. Can men, like, be normal? Huh? Make men great again. How about that? Jesus Christ. Anyway, I don't know, man. You know, there's definitely something there, but we just got to see more. And I guess he's a contender now. I don't know, man. I'm not that interested in invest, investing in boxing and all this shit. Just fuck it. Just put him in the ring with. Who do we put him in the ring with? Anyone like Ugas or better, basically, right? Put him in the ring. Like, let, let, let's just see what he's made of, basically. All right, I don't know. Maybe I'm a little overly critical, but I'm just, I'm just tired of the welterweight division, okay? And all this hype, all this talk, and and all these guys fighting. Um, you know, not the fights that we really want to see. Although, you know, I gotta give the PBC props because they've been putting on the fights. You know, so. When Bob Arrow makes all the in-house fights that, you know, he exhausts all the possibilities, it's all fine and good. But when the PBC does it like it's a problem all of a sudden, come on, man. Give the PBC some props, man. They've been putting on this. Insofar as the welterweight division goes, you know, they've been doing it well enough. It's been it's been pretty good. It looks like they're going to make all the fights. So hopefully Ennis is in that mix and, you know, dud if... Oh, who gives a fuck, man? He doesn't give a fuck about you. Why would we give a fuck about Terrence Crawford? Like, why? Quit playing yourself. Anyway, that's my video. Uh, there's there's some things to be impressed by Ennis, but at the same time, you know, let's see him. Let's step him up, like, for real. Because on paper, this was a step up, but in reality, nah. was just useless, man. Let's, let's step him up, see what he got. You know what I mean? Um... I I actually think the Sean Porter fight would be really, really interesting. But, you know, Porter got bigger fish to fry. So, in the meantime, I don't know. Step him up. That's all I'm saying. Step him the fuck up, man. Let's go. Thanks for watching.